and gentlemen, we're coming to you from my phone because our recorder has its memory card full. So what just happened there, John? And I don't know who it was on Saginaw Valley, but they caught some number 10, Jeremy Penn, sleeping at a level I've never seen, just had his head down for WKU and across court, a uh, just absolute fake shot, square, uh, he just went right down to his knees. I mean, oh my God, Josh, did that one look painful. I've been in the head a couple times, <laughs> nothing like that though. I'm really sorry that we didn't have the recording because I would have loved to hear the fans' reaction from that one. It's, oh my God, I mean, that one looked like it just hurt. Uh, I'm noticing Grand Valley uh, actually scoping out uh, both WKU, uh, no, sorry about that, uh, and uh, Saginaw Valley um, here. Um, both teams, both teams that Grand Valley could wind up seeing tomorrow. Play, yeah, um, I don't see any of them being first round teams that um, they would face because Grand Valley would probably, uh, you know what, you know what? Grand Valley lost to JMU. I would say they draw the sixth seed. They could see potentially a Western Kentucky tomorrow in the first round. They very well it's definitely could. a possibility. It all depends um, on how the, the seeding shakes out. And, it's it's all and depends. And we won't know that until the captain's meeting. Oh, so it's all speculative at this point, but it is a very good possibility. Oh, and 14. A really nice attempt to the catch uh, there by really Chase. Really beautiful, yeah. You can tell, man, you just you can hear the kid breathing heavily and you wanted that one. And 99, unfortunately, not able to get around to that block for Felix Barone. Um, Josh, you've been around this league for a while. Where does Felix rank overall if you factor in everything he does for WKU? Uh, where does he rank in like the wide spectrum of who's in the NCDA? Like he, player wise. He's probably, I'd say. A top 20 guy. Okay. And I think I always say that because I ha I didn't have the uh, the fortune of seeing a lot of the uh, earlier teams. Uh, okay. You know, we came around in 2007, so there had already been some years with some legendary players. But, uh, you know, Felix is WKU dodgeball. Felix is WKU dodgeball. Absolutely. The heart he has, man, you can just tell he cares so much. And a great by number Putnam. 24-7, that was 24-7. Petnam. Petnam, 24-7. Oh, with a monstrous kill right there, man. I, oh my God. You have four Wait. minutes and yeah. 47 yeah. seconds. Yeah, yeah. We won't say anything no, about it. No, we won't say anything about it. I won't uh, say so, anything about the game not being yeah, started. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe about 45 seconds elapsed. Yeah. No big deal, no big no deal. no clock running, but that's all right. It's like an uh, extra 45 seconds these two teams get to play. Yeah. Um, really, also, I also noticed a good experience for a team, the University of Wisconsin Plattsville, um, that we played them, we beat them three to two, but they got some ballers on that team. This is a perfect game to watch yeah. uh, for that because they want to get to a point where they can be a WKU who can come to a tournament and upset a great team um, like Saginaw Valley State. Yeah, absolutely. So as we cross the four minute mark uh, left in this game, Western is exhausted. Hands on their hips, they're, they're tired. hands on their knees. Everyone's tired right now. But uh, you really start to see the depth that Saginaw Valley has and the, the quality of their depth as their yeah. players are still on the attack. They're still head hunting. They're still looking for those kills. So that's where the difference comes in. The quality of your depth, but get past your top five. Who do you have, yeah, you know, six through 15 that's going to carry your team? Uh, I had a couple fans taking a couple shots over here. After this game, uh, alumni game's going on. Female? Yeah, okay, I swap. Um, also, um, it was really interesting. I remember it was about a month ago, and it was a national preview, and it was wrote, written by, I forget who, but it was a bunch of people. And they did, um, it was, I'm not sure if you go on the NCAA website a lot, Josh, but it said, like, every team's, like, weakness, X factors, and everything. And I remember for SVSU, it said their weakness was their depth. Which is interesting. Which is interesting. Because that's what I see as one of their big strengths. strengths. Yeah. Um, and I remember Spencer Jardine commented on it, and pretty much whoever wrote that article, whoever wrote that on them, 
lit them up, say he was so disappointed in saying that he thinks that was one of their like best strengths on their team. Um, and it's showing dividends here because they are looking as good as any team right now in the nation. Um, I've said it before, I think it is a six team. There's clearly a best six in this league. And then there are teams like Towson, Central Michigan, um, other teams, I guess you could say, um, Ohio State, yeah. um, that can always give these teams a run for their money. The Dark Horse teams. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to teams like Saginaw Valley. And to be the best, you have to beat the best. And uh, that just has, has not been, I don't know what that was, but it has not been the case today for Western Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Um, let's see. With almost 145. With one minute and 45 seconds left in the game. Um, let's see. Western Kentucky is down. Down, I want to say, 7 to 5, something around that. Uh, big bird number 75 right here. Oh, with a huge catch. Oh my God, his, he, just, he just clenched his hands there, man. What a catch by Sam. Oh, and another amazing catch by number 10 of Western Kentucky. Saying to Saginaw Valley, even though we have a minute left in this game, we are not letting you run over us. And this is this could be great moral uh, support for tomorrow and uh, later tournaments to come. One minute left. Thirty-five seconds left on the clock. Now, keep getting... That's the game. I don't know what that took out, but it took out something. And it kind of hit me in the face a little bit. Um, what did they Murder ball! So it just took out the camera pouch. Literally lit the camera pouch up. Um, and had that been my phone or anything else, I probably would have been in serious shit. Four, three, two, one. And that will be the game with Saginaw, with Saginaw Valley uh, taking down uh, University of uh, Western Kentucky University with a score of six to one. It was Josh Reamer and John Shaw Outley. Oh, no, I've been hit by Ben.